Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Edna Harding. It's been a while since I've been on, but I literally have been in hibernation, um, enjoying my time with my newborn, as well as um, just resting from all the craziness um, that's called life. But um, I really felt um, the unction of the Holy Spirit since actually the past couple of days to come on um, and release a word for each and every one of you who are going to be watching this video. Um, as you all know, it's been a rough season for many of us. I'm not going to go into all the details that we had to overcome just in the past few weeks, but let's just say that I'm glad it's over and we survived all of that. Um, I wanted to, uh, you know, come on a few times, but I just literally did not have the strength um, this past few months or the energy because of all the warfare that was going on. But um, by the grace of God, I'm here and healthy and, and my baby is actually, the reason why I can't really speak that loud is she's out there and she's napping um, and it's been a rough night because um, my husband is sick. So um, it's just been me uh, watching her and the husband, you know, for the past few days. And um, anyway, I just wanted to say hi first. I don't just want to come and release the words. I want to say hello, everybody. Hope you guys are doing well and that your family is, um, is healthy and um, you guys had not too many not, not didn't have too many challenges to overcome um, but um, God has a word of encouragement for you all and I'm just glad to be uh, able to be a vessel again of um, good news and so I'm just going to go ahead and pray Father God we just thank you Lord for this day we thank you Lord for my brothers and sisters in Christ who have made it Lord this is the last day of the decade and it sounds so dramatic but it's really an important transition for a lot of us, especially since we have been in the wilderness for so long. Father, we're so excited for what you're doing this hour, and we thank you, Lord, for the word that you're going to be releasing through me, Lord, and I pray, oh God, that you will use me, Lord, as a vessel of your goodness, of your grace, of your love, Lord, and your power, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so I'm going to cut to the chase because I really don't have much time. Um, so I wanted to start with a dream, actually a few dreams that I've had, um, over the past couple months, um, but the Lord is kind of finally putting it all together, um, uh, just the past week. And, um, again, I was going to wait till January to do this because I was wanted to rest, but the Lord just wanted me to release it. So, um, I'm just going to sum it all up, but basically I had in this dream, I was like running towards a, in a terminal, an airport terminal, and I didn't have any baggage, and I was just running, 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 running to check in because I was I knew I was late. Like I really felt like I was really, really late. So I was running, running, running. My, my, I had a ticket, and it didn't really tell me where the destination was yet, and I was running, 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 and I mean, it was like chaotic, and I was like really breathless. I finally made it to the check-in bag, and um, and... I said, I'm, no, I'm supposed to be here. I don't know where I'm going, but I know I'm supposed to be here. And, she, and then the check-in person told me, um, don't worry, your stuff is here. Your bag has already been packed. Um, you just made, you're made it on time. And I was like, whew, you know, whatever. And she's like, okay, let me see your passport. And I was like, my passport. I was like, I don't have a passport. So I remember I was like, do I have a passport? I was looking around and I finally grabbed out of my pocket. I have a passport, but when I opened a passport, you know, where it has your picture and your um, thing, it was blank. And I was like, um, and I gave it to them and, and, but it was blank. Like I didn't see, and there was nothing in here. And I was like, I know it's doing it. And, um, I gave it to the person and the person didn't they notice that it was blank. She, um, she was just looking at it and putting it in. And I was like, I'm so, I was so lost. I didn't know what was going on. And then, um, I was like, okay, you're going to Japan. I said, Japan. I was like, okay, you know, and I was like, all right. And, um, and, and that was it. I woke up and, um, the dream kind of bothered me because I didn't really know what it meant. I was like, Japan, this is so random. Like I really didn't know. And so, um, um, this is what the Lord told me what it meant. 
Um, I have some scriptures that I want to share, but before I do that, let me just, um, actually, I'm going to go ahead and start with the scriptures. So the scriptures that the Lord had put in my heart is found in um, Isaiah. Um, it starts out in Isaiah chapter 6 and all the, goes all the way down to Isaiah chapter 9. But in Isaiah chapter 6, um, verse 3, and I'm using um, the Message Bible, um, which is sometimes the Lord will tell me to use this. So this is what the version that I was reading it says, holy, holy, holy is the God of the angel armies. His bright glory fills the whole earth. Um, his bright glory fills the whole earth. And that's what the Lord emphasized. His glory is filling the whole earth. For many years, a lot of prophetic voices has been decreeing and, and prophesying that the glory of the Lord is going to come on the earth. And, um, and that's what's happening right now in this decade. And I believe it's multiple generations. The glory of God is going to continue to fill the earth. Um, and then, um, then it talked about in verse, uh, if you go all the way down, I believe it's verse seven and eight. It says, look, this coal has touched your lips, gone your guilt, your sins wiped down. Then I heard the voice of the master. Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? I spoke up. I'll go send me. And there's many of us who in the body of Christ who said this exact thing, Lord, I'll go send me. I'll go wherever it is. I'll go send me. And I remember years and years ago, after I lost my job, because um, dealing with corporate America, and I remember I was crying, pouring out my to God. I said, Lord, use me, use me. And I believe many of you guys have said that prayer, exact thing, pouring out your heart to the Lord, use me, use me, use me. And then all of a sudden, all hell broke loose. And a lot of challenges came, came my way, and I'm sure your way as well. Now, if you look at... Um, uh, chapter seven, it talks about, you know, a virgin bearing a son. So it talks about Mary and, um, the scripture that I want you to focus on is the part where it says, Emmanuel, God with us. Um, and so it says a girl, I think this is 14, 15, says, a girl who is presently a virgin will get pregnant. She'll bear a son and name him Emmanuel, God with us. By the time the child is 12 years old, able to make moral decision, a threat of war will be over. Relax. So basically, God was saying, like, look, the answer is already here. You know, we've been f dealing with all this warfare. The answer is Jesus. And it's timing that, you know, Christmas just happened. And I know Jesus wasn't literally born in December. Um, and I know there's a lot of you folks out there that are going to try to argue and all this stuff. But the meaning of what we're saying is that we're celebrating it as if Jesus was born during a time, even though I believe she was born in the spring in the real Hebraic calendar. But the answer is God with us. God has been with us through all of this storms, through all of the challenges that happen in our lives. And um, there's a part where it says, um, uh, in chapter eight, it says, Maher Shalal Hashbaz, which means spoils, speeds, plunders, and hurries. Um, it says, get a big sheet of paper and write it in in, in, in eligible ink. This belongs to the Maher Shalal Hashbaz, spoil, speeds, plunder, hurries. Now, I'm still meditating on that, like what exactly that means, but I believe that we are going to be collecting the spoils of the enemy. And, and God is about to really, like, crush the devil with everything that our, his people went through. He's about to crush the devil. And, um... And he's going to make a mockery out of the enemy and their and his tactics. Um, now, I want you guys to go to um, verse 10. And this is a part that really stood out to me. It says in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 10, it says, Plan and plot all you want. Nothing will come of it. All your talk is mere talk, empty words. Because when all is said and done, the last word is Emmanuel, God with us. Imagine that, guys. You have the enemy and his demons and his assignments and all those p things that are coming against us, uh, you know, in, in the spirit. But God is telling the enemy, like, plan all you want. At the end of this all, the last word will be Emmanuel. God is with us. 
verse 12 and 13 says, don't fear what they fear. Don't take on their worries. If you're going to worry, worry about the holy. Fear God of the angel armies. Uh, the holy can be either a hiding place or a boulder blocking your way. And it's amazing how God really emphasized that verses, those verses to me because, you know, a lot of times we have fear that we're, you know, fear of the enemy, fear of what's to come, fear of the future, fear of, you know, the financial challenge, fear of the sickness, fear of, you know, dying or whatever it is. And what God is reminding us, you don't have to be afraid. Don't be afraid of those things. Be have be afraid of God, the angel of armies, have the reverential fear. You know, the holy can either be a hiding place where we literally hide, you know, under the shadow of his wings, or it could be a boulder blocking the attacks of the enemy. And that's what the, en the that's what the enemy has been trying to do. He, you know, even though we've been through a lot, God has blocked so many more things that we can even ponder of but because of his grace and because of his loving kindness he's been protecting us all this time and isaiah chapter 9 verse 2 i want you guys to look at that because this is um this is really huge she's really emphasizing this it says the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light for those who lived in a land of deep shadows light sunbursts of light i believe that god is opening up every blind eye that's in this season where those things that didn't make sense and we've just been covered by darkness with this fog and confusion and this witchcraft and all these things in the atmosphere the lord is releasing his light on us so that our eyes will be open and then light is just going to start shining in the midst of the darkness all over the world um and then in, in, in chapter 10 verse 3 um i think that's what it is where it says the abuse oh no no not chapter 10 sorry chapter 9 verse 3 this is the thing that really stood out in my heart and my spirit the abuse of oppressors and cruelty and of tyrants all their whips and 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 where'd it go Whips and cudgels and curses is gone, done away with, a deliverance as surprising and sudden as Gideon's old victory over Midian. Guys, read that again. The abuse of oppressors and cruelty of tyrants, all their whips and cudgels and curses is gone, done away with, a deliverance of surprising and sudden as Gideon's old victory after Midian. Remember when Gideon was coming as the Midianites? He didn't take 3,000. It went down to 300. You know, it seems like we lost, you know, everything. It seems like we're down to the last straw and we're losing the battle. But God's delivering power has, is, has and is and is going to deliver you right now. Don't take those old baggages. And I'm going back to the dream. You know, we... In the dream, I was running. I really thought I was running late. I was freaking out. I was panicking. And I didn't have any baggage. And God said, and this, where he's taking us, where he's taking us, you, you have to let go. Go as you are. You know, you don't bring anything. Don't worry about anything. Don't bring anything. Things that you, your plans, all the things that you're trying to figure it all out, leave it all there. And just run by faith. Run to the check-in table. And, you know, it's funny how your passport, my passport, um, didn't have any identity. And God is saying that identity, you know, you might not know what your identity is yet and where you're going at this point, but it's already been figured out. It's funny because the lady didn't stop me from going to where I'm going. I remember I looked at it, it was blank, but when I turned it in, um, it didn't stop them. Just like they knew where I was going. And the other thing that God emphasized in my dream was that my luggage was there already. I didn't pack it. Apparently, everything I need is already there. God knows exactly what you need and where he's taking you. And he already packed it up for you. Everything you need and in, in where you're going, he already provided. Now, I do want to emphasize Japan. And this is when my, my heart started bursting with joy. Where Japan, when I'm reading this book by Barbie Breathitt, Japan means um, sun origin is often referred to as the land of the rising sun. To see or visit Japan in your dreams indicate Jesus, the son of God, is rising in your life to cause his light to shine brighter and brighter as a noonday sun. 
Jesus, the Son of God, is rising in your life to cause this light to shine brighter and brighter as a noonday sun. Guys, be encouraged. You are going to Japan. You are the destination where you're going. Jesus is going to shine so bright, so bright on you and your life and your family and your finances and your relationships and your health. Everything that you've been um, battling for, everything that you've been worried about, all of those things and more. Um, God is going to shine upon your life with his goodness and just be encouraged with brothers and sisters. We are in the last day of the decade and the next, you know, and you keep hearing it again, greater things to come. But really, guys, it's an exciting time for the body of Christ because I believe that we made it. (laughs) We survived. You survived. I survived. Hallelujah. I would scream up and down right now. But like I said, baby is sleeping and I think she's actually waking up right now. So I can't really chat very long. I love you all. I am praying for you guys. Know that you are loved by the Most High God. And just know that we are His children. And we're going to Japan. We're going to Japan. And His light is going to shine upon us. And, you know, the light has come. And the glory of the Lord is being released on earth right now. I love you all. Thank you for being so patient with me. Thank you for you guys who've been so supportive during this whole transition. Um, having a new baby has been really tough, especially with my injuries. I, you know, I injured my back. I fractured my metatarsal. Like I said, we're not going to go into all the details. Um, we had our formal wedding because my husband, remember, was deployed. And so he got back. And so um, we finally had our formal celebration with our friends and family. So that all happened. And you had the holidays and, and you know, there's drama there. So anyway, there's a lot of crazy stuff. But I love you all. I'm praying for you guys. And just know that you are loved. All right. Have a wonderful, wonderful time with your friends and family. And for those of you guys in parts of the world that are already celebrated New Year, um, Happy New Year. All right. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.